heading on out in the motorhome today. This is the last day at battle. Quite sad to leave, really. I oh, know, it's been my favourite sight on this uh, trip. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed all this trip, to be honest. It's, yeah. It's been, been great, yeah. yeah. Turn right onto the alley, then take the first left. So we'll this is sat now today, aren't we? We'll yeah, so take the van, um, two reasons. We're going to Bodium Castle which you can take the dogs around the, the outside but you can't take the dogs inside so we didn't really want to leave them outside in potentially hot sun so we thought we'd take the van and then we can leave them in the van I think you're going to stay behind with them are you? I think so yeah yeah, yeah. okay Tara does fret a bit yeah she just gets in a bit of a state yeah so uh, we can look after the dogs turn left onto the alley and the other reason is Go and pay our taxes. Get some fuel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we bought any for the van, have we, since we left home? No, I'm on about just over a quarter empty. I yeah. need enough to get to get back. So we've been going out in the car, which obviously which helps. The unleaded is yeah. a bit cheaper. So it's like 45, 50 miles to the gallon as opposed to 25 so, yeah. miles to the gallon. Yeah. Because it opens automatically yeah. on the way out. Yeah. I think I've said this before. Yeah. I've only, so only done it five <laughs> times, four times. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so I'm not sure which way I'm going, to be perfectly honest. but I think we're going right at the end. I think that's what she's going to say. Okay. So we'll catch up with you on the journey. There's two cars there, both scrape the sides, haven't they? Have they? Yeah. Yeah. I think I fancy leaving my car out there like that. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Bit of road. Oh. Terrible. Made worse by the fact that the fridge is empty. Yeah. Well, not as full as it usually is. The long road we came down yesterday from Rome. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. right, yeah. It's quite a nice road, isn't it? No idea what on the B2165 is either. No. Turn left at the stop sign. Dustbin men again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, I'll just go and get booked in. I'm going to wander around the castle first myself, and then we'll have a wander around the, the grounds a little bit later with the dogs. So they've been out, so Jenny's going to keep them company. 
and uh, there's the castle. Well, it is a big car park here, but I uh, don't think it's ideal for motorhomes. So obviously the overflow is a better idea if you come in a motorhome. Just going to make my way up to the castle, and it's better to arrive a little bit earlier. So they've got four coach loads arriving uh, a little bit later. So hopefully I can make my way up there before that lot arrive. Well, that's a map of the uh, Bodium Castle and grounds. It's quite extensive grounds. The main attraction, obviously, is the castle and the moat. So hopefully we can get some good footage because it is a beautiful day today. Bands over there. Looks like there's an old pillbox there. Some relic from the World War II, I should think. Well, here we are. It says Bodium Castle was built in 1385 by Sir Edward Dallingridge and his wife Elizabeth. Sir Edward came from Dallingridge in the Ash Ashdown Forest in Sussex. He was a soldier at the time of King Richard II fought in France and served in the King's court. Elizabeth uh, Wardier's family owned lands in Bodium Village, so when they met, married, together they built Bodium Castle. Quite an amazing place. So a castle view up there. Exhibition and school room, so we might do that later. Big fish there. <laughs> Very imposing looking building. Callis at the top there. <laughs> Make himself giddy looking up there. <laughs> well, this is quite a place. Well, we're going to free to climb the tower, so we're going to go up the tower. We'll have a look up there, some nice views up there. But what a place. We'll do that first. This is the minstrel. Grey Hall was probably here. It appears to be a traditional knight's hall with an open hearth in the centre and dais at the east end for a high table. This is 56 steps to the top. Yeah, better get going then. steps to here. And the fireplace. I presume that's garda rope. Yep. Let's carry on up. Oop. Twenty. 
26.27 Bit halfway up now Nice views just here Let's go on up Apologies if I breathe a bit hard, this is quite a climber Definitely see for miles from up here, absolutely miles and miles. Don't think this castle was ever sort of attacked or anything, or used in anger as it were, just a beautiful period piece, I suppose. Just come down one floor. Minstrel, so this would have been the great hall. And the olden ladies would have sat over there. Big old steps here. Wow. narrow arches as well, at low arches. Obviously a few floors here, as you can see. On the ground floor. Not much um, around to tell you what's going on. There's not that many boards I've seen. I'll have a look at another one over, well there is a board over here. We'll have a look at that. It says the side of the castle housed the apartments of Sir Edward and his wife, Lady Elizabeth Wardo. The apartments would have been divided into an outer chamber, a great chamber, and inner reception. And inner chamber. Each room would have had a fireplace. Can you spot them to work out where the rooms are? So they would have spent a considerable amount of time in here. And, uh, including managing the finances and the ledges below the double windows, window seats. Up there, provided uh, when we've done our embroidery and the accounts. You can obviously see the other floors here. The lady of a medieval castle was in charge of its daily management and supplies. Even building high doors, or maybe the ground levels come up. I don't know. More rooms. You really duck down to get through there.
priest. So there's a large formerly stained glass window. Facing east shows this area was the chapel. Essential part of the castle Christianity was intrinsic to medieval life in England and governed everything from how people spent time to what they could eat. The chapel was on the first floor. And can you see evidence of this floor and crypt below? link, the little room up the stone steps is the sacristy, where the priest kept his robes, silverware and books. The two windows above the sacristy were reached from the Lord's apartment allowing Sir Edward and Lady Elizabeth to attain services in private. The priest was responsible for education and presided over all Christian services in the chapel, believed to have an important role in ensuring people went to heaven when they died, forgiving sins and performing the final rites for the dying. Sounds like a little audio in here. Ooh, more steps to climb. Three book groups only. Okay. <laughs> we'll go up there then. He's been very well for himself as one of the followers of Sir Robert Knowles. A man so notorious that French peasants were seen to jump in the river at just the mention of his name. soon back off to France, where he spends a large part of the next ten years. But in 1377, he returns home, wealthy, powerful, and influential. To cap it all, in the same year Elizabeth comes into her inheritance, making Sir Edward master of Bordeaux and all its lands. There is, however, still no peace with France. You're looking at the steward. Hey, yeah, what are you doing? Come on. So when the castle was built, there was no wooden entry doors. The doors were installed in the 19th century and originally came from a church. Scientific testing has shown that the sole remaining punk cullis was installed in 1385. At some point in the castle's history, two port cullises were removed from the gatehouse for their iron, but this portcullis had warped and was stuck. I'm standing in the middle of the gatehouse, you can see the middle section has been cut away and the rest remains. There were two stewards to man manage a castle, one supervising the Lord's estate and the other is household. Traditionally, the steward supervising the household had held a set of keys to the castle. Tower here to climb. Stocks here, always useful. I become an archer and defend somewhere like Bodium. Training would start at the age of eight. It took ten years to become an expert and professional archer. They would keep plenty of arrows in their quiver because a skilled archer could fire up to 12 arrows a minute. Armour was flexible with padded padding and brown leather. This is a knight, was a 
armed warrior and trained nobleman who fought on horseback, usually trained from an early age of around seven until their early twenties. They wore metal armour and proudly their crest on their tunic. Skills included jousting, hand-to-hand -hand combat and use of other swords as well as weapons and archery. Hmm. Thirty-six steps, so not quite fifty-six then. Here we go. Another room here. This is where the castle was built in 1385 and had a dog-leg leg approach. And this was a defensive feature, ensuring invaders approach parallel to the castle walls, making them an easy target. Battlements were the perfect platform soldiers to patrol and safeguard the castle. They also offered archers a higher vantage point. There were three types of medieval archer, the bowmen, long bowmen, and crossbowmen. A good bowmen could hit their mark from up to 328 metres away and fire 12 arrows per minute. Let's go up to the top. I'll do that in a minute. Locked for the bats there. It says do not touch the bats. Must be bats in there, but well, I can't see them. <laughs> see the bat droppings. Oh lovely. So someone carry a, a bat associated rabies. Whoa. Must be some sort of fireplace there, be my guess. Or servant. Maybe in the servants' quarter next door to the kitchen, servant slept on wooden pallets to lift them up above the rodents. The straw is bedding. The square hole above the fireplaces. Let's see that. Got the square holes in the fireplace. It's possible they heated the dormitory by drawing heat from the kitchen fire into the sleeping area. Originally, the squares would have been part of an archway size of a fireplace that was partially bricked up at a later date. The castle this size was large enough to house up to 80 servants, although I cannot be certain there were that many here. 
most of them would have been men, with the exception of the brewer, washerwomen and ladies' servants. So, <laughs> the worst job in the castle belonged to the gong scourer, usually a small child to clean the chutes that connected the toilets to the moat. Nice. In a medieval castle, the master cook was the most important person. He oversaw several kitchen workers who roasted meats in the fireplace and boiled soups or sauces in large cauldrons. The cook was expected to produce incredible dishes for feasts that would be guaranteed to impress the guests. They might decide to roast an entire swan or a peacock and serve it up complete with feathers. Nice. Like the well. Actually got water in it as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it says the main water supply for the castle, the well water wasn't good enough for drinking, but it was used in the kitchen. The well is ten feet deep and fed by natural springs and moat water. On the top of this tower was a dovecote, once home to hundreds of pigeons, 200 doves. Yeah. Oh, you see it at the top there. Yeah, it's a pity Jenny couldn't come in here. It's very nice. It's a beautiful day as well. Sure, there's a lot more to see. A quick hi to Anthea, who's doing some of the tours in the castle today. Um, I don't think I've got time to go on her tour, but it was nice to meet you and thanks for watching, Anthea. Uh, meet uh, our viewers in all sorts of places. Probably got to be the most attractive looking castle, I think. I have to take some pictures and have a little walk around with Jenny and all. So it's some more pictures from the outside. Yeah, you can't help but look at it. Yeah, we're at the Castle Inn, just across the road. And we're sitting in the garden. And someone's got a fire going over there somewhere. But we'll see what the food's like. Yeah. I was enjoying it so much and nearly forgot to film it. A veggie bean, bean burger. burger. And a, a veggie chilli guacamole with guacamole. Yeah. And uh, and chilies. Girls. Don't go up there, do we go up here? Oh, well, it's where it says. Footpath. Goes that way. Oh. Go on then, off you go. Yeah, a tea room or something here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, I think that's it for this uh, little visit to Bodium Castle. The weather's taken a turn for the worse. But that way it has, not it? Yeah, got a bit uh, overcast, so we're a little bit worried about taking the awning down. <laughs> I wish we'd done it before we left, but never mind, we'll do that when we get back. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, it really does help. And give us a thumbs up and all that. 
and we'll catch up with you, you on our next leg of this tour which is Alderstead Heath. Heath that's it, that's it. get right. the name wrong so we'll see you then yeah